Hello, my name is New, and if you're new to this channel, welcome, and if you're not so new to this channel, welcome back. Today is going to be a little different type of video. I'm going to do more of a voiceover than a doing my makeup while talking type video. And yes, yes, I know, I know, don't judge me. But yeah, so today I kind of didn't put post video on Saturday. It's most likely Sunday night. Um, I can explain. The video I recorded for Saturday was the same day I recorded the video for Wednesday. Um, and basically the video, I didn't really like it. Just like I didn't like Wednesday's video, but I still edited it anyways. And yeah, Wednesday's video. Oh, uh, recording that headache. Yeah, but also recording the case study video that I was planning to record. It wasn't really good because the case study only had one file in it. It wasn't really that known. It was just really talk about it. And I, being a psychology major, that sucks. So we're not gonna talk about that and we're not going to acknowledge that I did that type of video so we're doing a new one and um while recording this video specifically but can I talk about it yeah so I was getting ready for a sweet 16 and there were people renovating my house like my apartment where I'm living at and I wasn't gonna really talk to the camera while doing makeup um, so we're getting shit quality today, and I'm sorry about that. Um, I hope you understand. Uh, so let's get on to the video, shall we? Disclaimer, before we get into this video, there is going to be a lot of disturbing things that we'll be talking about in this video. Um, if you don't like, uh, disturbing content, look away no further this is not the video for you we'll be talking about controversial topics and also sexual violence and violence in general so if you don't want to hear this again leave this is your warning if not continue watching the video thanks we heard as we heard from the intro um I'm going to be talking about a case study today, and this case study was made from Harlem. Ugh, I'm going to make so many mistakes speaking today, but let's let's continue. Harry Harlow, who is an American psychologist, best known for his material maternal separation, dependency needs, and social isolation experiments on monkeys. So the one that we're going to be talking about today is about the attachment theory, and so this one is talking about um, when they created inanimate surrogate mothers for the infants, the monkey infants, from wire and wool. Each infant became attached to its particular mother, recognizing it by its unique face and prefer preferring above others. And then he tried to, um, investigate if they had a preference and for the bare wire monkey or the clothed covered monkey so for this experiment he presented the infants with a clothed mother and a wire mother under two conditions in one situation the wire mother held a bottle with food and the cloth mother held no food in the other situation the clothed mother held a bottle and the wire mon the wire mother had nothing it was known that um, in this experiment particular that a lot of the monkeys um, in the situation where the infants were presented with the clone mother and the wire mother with the food, some monkeys would actually just prefer to stay with the clone mother. And let's do a pause from editor new for the bolting out a whole bunch of lyrics in the middle of a video, you're welcome. Would go to the wire mother for their particular food and 
sometimes they wouldn't even go to the wire. It should be also noted that he took away these monkeys, these infant monkeys, a few hours away from birth, like after birth. So this is the most controversial part, that they took away these infants from their particular parent to do this experiment. So yeah, they of course preferred the uh, soft warming cloth of the mother. It was also stated that these data make it obvious that contact comfort is a variable of overwhelming importance in the development of a fictional response whether as lactation is a variable of is a variable of importance as well um also in a later experiment he also demonstrated that young monkeys will also turn their cough to their cough so it should also be known that he stated when surrogate mothers were removed from the room the effect was immediate they would they felt as they didn't have a secure base to explore so basically he would have the monkeys be able to explore the whole room and have the mother there but when they remove the mother they would often freeze up crouch scream cry like rock and like cry so it shows the importance of having that mother there present um uh, for the infants to evolve basically so so one of the first experience that experiments that he had done was involving isolating monkeys now this is another thing that has to do a lot with socialization attachment in the theme of this video i just wanted to talk about these experiments that he conducted so basically he would put the monkey in a cage surrounded by stew walls with a small one-way mirror so the experimenters can look in but the monkey cannot see out the only connection the monkey had to the world was when the experiment's hand changed his bedding deliver fresh water and food and by the way these were baby monkeys these were basically infants and so that's why it also makes it very controversial because you're leading the beginning of their life to be very uh bad basically um so the baby monkeys were placed in these boxes soon after birth four were left for 30 days four for six months and four for a year after 30 days the total isolates as they were called were found to be immorally disturbed after isolated for a year they barely moved did not explore or play were incapable of having sexual relations when placed with other monkeys for a daily play session they were badly bullied two of them refused to eat and starved themselves to death he also wanted to test out how isolation will affect parenting skills but isolation isolates were unable to mate so they didn't have artificial insemination then so he um Okay, so this is extremely controversial. Me reading and talking about this with you guys is extremely controversial. Let me tell you, this is a disclaimer. I should have done the disclaimer in the beginning of the video. I'm probably going to put an audio clip of it once I'm done with this. But just know that there was a lot of things wrong with this. This was a very controversial case, not just because he was working with infants. He was also doing things like this so he devised what he called was a rape rack to which the female isolates were tied in a normal monkey mating position he found that as they were incapable of having sexual relationships they were also unable to parent their offspring oh my god sorry either abusing or neglecting them not even in the most devilish dreams could we 
have designed a surrogate as evil as these real monkey mothers were, he wrote. He stated, having no social experience themselves, they were incapable of appropriate social interaction. One mother held their baby face to the floor and chewed off its feet and fingers. Another crushed her baby's head and most of them simply ignored their offspring. This is why socialization is important, not just because of, <laughs> you know, uh, well, the obvious here, it's just a way for them to learn how to experience things. The mother teaches them how to interact and what is good and what is wrong. These experiments also showed what total and partial isolation did to these developing monkeys, but he felt he had not captured the essence of depression, which he believed characterized by feelings of loneliness, helplessness, and sense of being trapped or being sunk in a well of despair, he said. So apparently, to him, he has not figured out what depression is. This is, for me, this is more than depression. This is just them not knowing how to interact at all. They've never socialized. They never learned how to nurture, how to socialize with other monkeys. So when they see another person or monkey like them, they're like, what is that? You know, so that's what I feel. Another fairly dark experiment was the experiment he also did with monkeys. He he did a lot of experiments with monkeys. Let me just tell you, he just he just went in. This one was the Dungeon of Despair. Apparently, a colleague of his warned him not to do that because it's very uh, uh, politically incorrect, not harmful. But no, he still enjoyed um calling it the pit of despair so um what he did he placed monkeys that were at least three months old and had already bonded with others and he the whole point of this experiment was just for him to break the bonds in order to create symptoms of depression he wanted to make monkeys depressed that was his goal <laughs> sorry that's not funny I don't know why I'm laughing. That's not something I should do. This is just very disturbing. I don't know how else to react to this. But basically, the chamber was a small metal inverted pyramid with slippery slides slanting down to a point. The monkeys were... <laughs> this is not funny. I am going to continuously laugh. I don't know what else to do. He put them place them where the point was and the opening was covered in mesh the monkeys would spend the first day or two trying to climb out the slippery sides and after a few days babe gave up i would have gave up to to be honest and uh, i would just gave up the moment they put me in there but this is not about me this is about the monkeys um harlow wrote most subjects typically assume a hunch position in the corner of the bottom of the apparatus. One might presume at the situation at, that they will find their situation to be hopeless. End quote. Sorry, Billy Sarian, but I became you at that moment. Um, Stephen J., another of Harlow's doctoral students placed some monkeys in the chamber in 1970 for his PhD. Why would you do that for your- I'm sorry, I am overreacting. Let's continue with this um, audio recording. He wrote that he could find no monkey who had any defense against it. Even the happiest mo monkeys came out damaged. He concluded that even the a happy, normal childhood was no defense against depression. I mean, you were isolating monkeys. What did you expect? But that's just me. You know, that's just my opinion. 
This experiment delivered scientist writer Deborah Bloom has called common sense results. Couldn't say it better myself. Namely, that monkeys, normally very social animals in nature, emerge from isolation badly damaged, and that some recover while others don't. Now, let's talk about uh, reactions of people. Now, I'm just going to read something really quickly. I'll also credit and link a lot of these. These are probably not the best critical things. Um, we shouldn't be using Wikipedia, but uh, here we go. Um, the experiments were condemned both at the same at the time and later from within the scientific community and elsewhere in academia. In 1974, American literature critic Wayne C. Booth wrote that Har uh, Harry Harlow and his colleagues go on torturing their non-human primates decades after decade, invariably proving what we all knew in advance that social creatures can be destroyed by destroying their social ties. No way. Totally didn't know that just by being a human being. He writes that Harlow made no mention of this criticism of the morality of his work. And this is why we discuss unethical experiments like these. It should also be known that he did another experiment of um, partial isolation where it involves raising monkeys that were in bar wire cages which allow them to see smell and hear other monkeys but provide no opportunity for any physical contact like we said previously total isolation just made sure that they couldn't hear them anything that they had no contact at all with any of the monkeys now it was reported that it resulted in abnormalities like blank staring, stereotypical repeated circling around the cage, and of course, self mutilation. These monkeys were then observed in various settings for, for the study. Some of the monkeys were kept in solitary isolation for 15 years. 15 years, my dudes! In total isolation experiments, baby monkeys were left alone for, like I said, 3, 6, 12, but now also 12 or 24 months of total social deprivation. The experiments produced monkeys that were severely psychologically disturbed. Also, Harlow wrote, no monkey has died during isolation yet initially removing from total isolation however they went usually go into a state of depression characterized by autistic self clutching and rocking one of the six monkeys isolated for three months refused to eat after release and died five days later the autopsy report attribute death to emotional anorexia the effects of six months of total isolation were so devastating and debilitating that we had to go get the experiment rolling but we soon assume initially that 12 months of isolation will not produce any additional decrement this assume assumption proved to be false 12 months of isolation almost obliterated the animals social just everything so basically what this is trying to say is that 12 months just the monkeys are not able to socialize they are not able after a year they're not able to socialize with anyone or become a social being it completely destroys the aspect of their uh, personalities he also tried to reintegrate the monkeys who have been isolated for six months by placing them with monkeys who have been raised normally so this is what i wanted to talk about is the recovery for some of these monkeys which the rehabilitation attempt meant with limited success so he wrote that total six month isolation for the first six month life produced 
several defects in virtually every aspect of social behavior. Isolates exposed to monkeys of the same age who are rendered normal achieved only limited recovery of simple social response. Some monkeys mothers reared in isolation exhibit acceptable maternal behavior when forced to accept infant contact over a period of months but show no further recovery. He also said that isolates given to surrogate mothers develop cruel interactive patterns amongst themselves opposed to this when six month isolates were exposed to younger three month old monkeys they achieved essentially complete social recovery for situations tested it also said that the findings were confirmed by other researchers who had no difference between peer therapy recipients and mother reared infants but found artificial surrogates have very little effect so it was also stated that he did recent work even with rats and evidence touched during infancy results in decrease in corticosteroid i probably butchered that a steroid hormone involved in stress increase in glutosteroid receptors i butchered that as well in many regions of the brain it was also found that even short interruption of mother-pup interactions in rats markedly affected serial biochemical processes in developing pup. So, as it said, it does mess up a lot of things. Like, it's not even, like, these aren't jokes. These are serious things. And I feel very sad just reading these because... Obviously, you're thinking about the animal that went through this, and not only did monkeys do that, they did this to monkeys, they also did this to rats, so it's sad. It's really sad to see. Um, also, additionally, it was found that animals who are touch-deprived have weaker immune systems, so not only does affection and being able to have physical contact, it also affects your immune system, so... Yeah, um, investigators measure direct and positive relationships between the amount of contact and grooming an infant monkey received during its first six weeks, six months of life, excuse me. Its ability to produce antibody TR in response to antibody challenges at a very, at a little over one year of age, trying to identify mechanisms for immune of touch some investigators point out modulations of arousal and associated c and s hormone activity touch deprivation may cause stress induced activity of the pituitary andral system which in turn leads to increased plasma cortisol and okay I'm not going to even pronounce that hormone just because I can't do that. So basically, that having, being touch deprived includes that bad hormones, well not bad hormones, bad immune system. And that if you have, uh, if you're not touch deprived, you, your adrenaline, not even pituitary adrenaline response, it, it will be in positive and healthy ways so do not isolate <laughs> a lot of that can cause depression uh social like a lot of social you need to be more social that's all that you need to be having a good relationship it's just all comes down to family interactions and all that so yeah um that's really basically what I have to say. Um, just know this guy, he, he's messed up. And all these experiments are very unethical. And yeah, I'm trying to fill this last 30 seconds. So um, I don't know what to say. Uh, here we'll go into the outro in a few seconds. So yeah, thanks. <laughs> well, this is technically the outro. Um, Thank you for watching this video. It was pretty weird. I know this is different than what I usually do. And 
I ended recording this video at 12 a.m. So technically this is uploaded on Monday. I'm really sorry and I apologize like, that I didn't upload this anytime sooner, but I was really busy and I'll make sure to have more time to do this and try and pre-record as best as possible. It's just that previous video that I made I really didn't like. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know this was a long video. I've been doing really long videos. I'm trying to make shorter videos, but they always end up being 20 minutes to 30 minutes long, and I'm really apologetic. But anyways, uh, I hope you have a good one. See you in the next video, which will hopefully be uploaded on Wednesday. And bye. Love you guys.